Hello and welcome to episode five of Working Title. I'm Ryan Fring with The Bit Life Show. This week we have Joseph Fulton on, a good longtime friend of our Jeffrey Bell. Yeah! This guy. And uh, current assistant editor um, out in LA. And he's, he's kind of the other side of the coin. We stayed here and made production work in the Midwest. And he went out there and started at the PA level and continued to work himself up. And now he's an assistant editor on Mike and Molly. Everyone, everyone wants to, at some point, be the director, be the writer, or be the creative head. But once you can actually figure out what you want to do, that's when you're really able to start walking that path. And, and it certainly helps to be able to see that in action, to see a director, to see a cinematographer, to see an editor, to see a producer, to see you know, any of those roles actually in action. And so we talk a little bit more about that on today's episode. Do the thing. The song about All right, everybody. Well, we'll just we'll now actually have our our heart open and, and welcome. Uh, was it Joseph Fulton? Yes, right? you can yeah. call me Joe. Show, Thanks, Joe. Thanks for coming. Yay! Tell us a little bit about yourself. He's my friend. Who are you? Uh, my name is Joe. Uh, <laughs> I've been best friends with Jeff Bell since second grade. I'm so sorry. I've had to pay him yeah. so much money. <laughs> Your lunch um, money. Why do what? you think yeah. I'm broke? <laughs> Joe, you must have a lot of dirt on Jeff. Yes. Yes. Or he's he has paid dirt me not on to say you. it, though, Maybe. so it's worked. Maybe he's got dirt on you. How, how much is the question? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I Should do have. D- Remember that time in high school, Joe? There seems to be lipstick and a dress involved. No, I don't, actually. I have the photo. Fo- <laughs> oh. Sorry, that conversation. That happened in high school, too. Yeah. Yeah, because you just did that like a week ago. Yeah, that was, yeah. that was. we do it once every decade. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> so it happens now. <laughs> so, so you guys grew up together. Yeah, we grew up together uh, in Janesville, and we went to elementary school together. Not middle school no uh but then also high school was that a choice <laughs> he needed to get away yeah i just went space. to the one across town and uh but ironically when we then merged to the same high school and this will sort of go into the hopefully topics we're going to discuss when we w- went to high school all of our friends from our separate middle schools came together and they recognized they would walk down the halls and say to me you're the guy from jeff's videos yeah and they would say to him you're the guy from joe's videos yeah. because nice. basically every project the, in was sort of school. like do mm-hmm. a project, a presentation in in middle school. I would say, oh, can I do a video? And I did the because, same. <laughs> and and uh, the friend that I had that wanted to help me with the videos was was Jeff, and he would, we would basically do the videos on the weekend, and I would edit them and take them to school. And <laughs> this was probably like maybe three videos per school year, but oh, nice. still, it was enough to. It got to the point where people That's recognized yeah. because they just assumed that I was going to do a video, and I'm sure they did the same thing for you. And it was we were always in each other's videos enough to the point where they're just like, "Oh yeah," they knew we were going to be in it. Yeah. And they knew it was yeah, coming, right. and we did. What the was co- the best one you did? Um, in your opinion, I th- I, yeah. this might have even been high school. The Spanish one? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't. Oh. I, it's probably high school. It sounds infamous. Um, the, the project was basically Love it. Write, it's a, jokes. right. Well. Not everyone did a video, but like it was like it was write a drama or a script and then perform it. And I said, "Can I do a video?" And <laughs> or I, whatever that is in Spanish. I basically wrote a telenovela. <laughs> and <laughs> also, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And also wrote commercials to play because I was like, <laughs> "It's so it's it probably fifteen, maybe ten. So it was a fairly." Not long but short mm-hmm. video. For the record, I took French. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Jeff took French. Basically, this I, is for Spanish I wrote class. a script. The, the the teacher approved it, and I filmed it. And it was, I think maybe my brother or like a neighbor also helped. But basically, it was me and Jeff, and maybe we had a maybe this was the the, the hair and the lipstick. <laughs> Um, and we wore like, a lot of costumes. You know, someone had <laughs> the woman. several several time occurrence. They were uh, costumes. We did not cross dress. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. It's and just we didn't do that. It wasn't what, that's not what this was about. It was in character. <laughs> we totally it was for, just in character for a show. That's right. Um, so that's I what they say in had a telenovela, right? yeah. and then there was co- the commercials. But the, the reason I bring up the commercials is because it's cool. But also, just <laughs> one day Jeff was just doing the commercial, and just I don't know Spanish. I'm a French speaker, native English speaker. <laughs> I can't. And don't he just a star. turns to the camera and goes. Chips, because <laughs> I didn't know what the Don't Spanish know. word was. Chips, <laughs> what? <laughs> and you did outtakes, and then at the end there was the outtakes, and, and all you did is like I think two or three times in that video you cut to me yeah. just doing chips, and then cutting away from <laughs> it, and that was it. So that that was a joke for the longest yeah. time. Was just me turning the camera, just chips. Yeah, 
I'll do it here too. Chips. <laughs> <laughs> Now we have a 4K version of me doing <laughs> chips. <laughs> so in, in middle school, is that where that started with you guys and, and your your yeah. love of it? Or, or was it before that? Or? I found or my parents said, you need something to entertain yourself with. Here's a camera. <laughs> yeah. Like, leave us alone. Yeah, it's all <laughs> good like, parents. No I, they gave me this camera um, that they had received for their wedding um, present years before. They're like, here, film it. So this is the <laughs> 90s now that they go, here's a camera. And the camera was old enough that it, it didn't have a, a tape deck in it. You put, couldn't put cassette tapes in it. It was a shell. It was a body. <laughs> and the, there was a cord that then went to the VCR that came with the camcorder. And you would plug that into the like the, okay. out, the input and press record sure, on the right, VCR. Sure, right, We need to specify that cord was literally and it this was, long. It was about two feet. <laughs> that was it. And it went to the back of the yeah. VCR. Because there was no So is that just yeah. RCA so, cables? RCA right into the... I mean, it, w- it was one cable. So it was... It okay. Was, I think it was... Uh, it might have been RCA. But uh, it did video brand. and audio or brand. just... It did video and audio, oh, but okay. it was, uh, speci- that camera was specifically designed to go into that VCR. It wasn't, oh, sure. You couldn't wow. bring it now and plug it in with your... With your that was technology ahead of its time. Like, <laughs> Instead of technology that just worked, you know, by itself, which, yeah. is, you know, everything now, you need all these other parts in order for anything to work. Yeah. Work. But, probably, I mean, like, you yeah. think about it, like, this was even before, like, the giant camcorders that had the VHS tapes, plug- like, which that is almost ridiculous to think about, those huge cameras. It was before that. Because well, there was no film. Well, they would have, before that, they would have had beta. Really like, they would have had beta before that. <laughs> I mean, it <laughs> was, beta it, beta the camera itself was about this big and probably oh, wow. weighed less than 10 pounds. Yeah, because it was, that was tiny, probably cutting edge, though. It was a tiny little thing. In the 1980-something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they had Hi8 and all that, so that mm-hmm. was already out, and mm-hmm. we had this, or at least yeah. it was coming out recently, or soon, shortly thereafter. Um, Jeff wasn't there when I first got my hands on it, and then, like, the next weekend, he, like, came over to hang out, and I was like, well, I have this thing that <laughs> records video and audio at the same time. It's very interesting. <laughs> this video yes. camera. camera. So it wow. hooked up to the one VCR, which was in the corner of my parents' basement, mm. <laughs> and... Uh, so <laughs> so it was like it was like plays in your basement exactly yes. and like, you were able to record when, when the camera was faced this way at this <laughs> zoom level that's a living room yep and when it's this way that's a doctor's office yep <laughs> and when it's this way it's zoomed out a little bit more that's the outside nice. yep nice and then um, when it was when it was this way and it was zoomed really in that was the second room that was behind the couch yeah, there was that a, was the living room yeah. There was a bar too. It was a bar, <laughs> but we just zoomed in really close to that. That was a new location, oh, and, and oh, mind you, this was on horrendous. a VCR. That so everything was shot linear. It was just like <laughs> scene one, yeah, or and then stop. We had lived a you, lot. Had you like well, crawl over to the VCR? And did press you ever stop. get fancy enough to to edit? Did you do uh, a VCR to VCR? Did not do that, but eventually <laughs> we tried taping stuff off the VCR. A few years later, my dad, we had bought a computer and had uh, Windows Movie Maker on it. And oh, so you nice. could have, I would put the tape in a VCR and uh, record it onto the camera, yeah, or onto you could the computer. capture it onto the computer. And that's when I first started editing. Mm. This was, I think, I was seventh or eighth grade at the time, and this was the first, I, the first thing we ever shot non-linear. And I started to edit it, and I was like, this is this is really fun. Like mm-hmm. this is what I enjoy. I enjoyed nice. putting the puzzle together. So in eighth grade, I decided I wanted to be a video editor. Oh like wow! Eventually, and it's stuck. in my life, and wow, I've been pursuing that at middle much school. Ever since. Yeah, people are usually just you know, I want to yeah. be that you know, even yeah. before that, and then up till middle school, and then you realize, oh my yeah. gosh, I got to be something useful. Yeah. yeah, and that story is very true, and it's come in handy in a lot of job interviews because huh. I, I guess people don't want people who are like, I don't know what I want to do. <laughs> I can't imagine why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. doesn't that not is that not the person you want to hire? Yeah, <laughs> right. So now, what was that piece that you edited for the first time on? Uh, and and Ellie, uh, for what I remember, it's probably true because I remembered it. Uh, it was uh, <laughs> totally not scripted. I'm, I'm never wrong. It was an episode <laughs> of a television show that Jeff and I created, and it was it was based off of a TV show from much earlier called The Odd Couple, and we called it The <laughs> okay. Strange Couple. <laughs> so I see what you did there. Jeff and I were like, I mean, back you know years before, like it's you and me. What can we do? And Jeff's like, there's this TV show that was on many years ago oh, called yeah. The Odd Couple. Do yeah. you remember that blackmail we were discussing earlier? <laughs> yes. This tape works for both of us. Gotcha. That's kept Those you shows. bonded You'll all these years. Uh, maybe at some point mm, that Monday. needs to come in. There will probably be a clip 
Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, maybe you know watching. what? Maybe I will. Forget <laughs> it. I'll just throw a clip but, up of it. I mean, that's that's how you have to start. You have to start with imitation because you don't know what yeah, the heck you're exactly. doing. You know, so you gotta you gotta find something. I mean, so the first episode we ever did of that was, I, th- I think it was pretty similar to the first one of the Odd Couple. Was Jeff basically knocked on the door of Joe and said, "Hey, I'm moving in." And, yep. And, nice. And it was like, okay, well, what do you want to do? Well, let's. Go to the bar or go to outside. And, or the and what was that? Was that was that? It was like late seventies or early eighties. The Odd Couple. When was that? Ah, uh, that was seventies. Remember? Seven. Okay, yeah. that's what I thought. Yeah, I'm pretty sure From that the was, entire. Yeah, just based yeah. upon the clothing and the set. Yeah, I feel like that was the seventies and the theme song. That's yours. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like that whole thing was, and then like like we we did we did have enough thought to like tweak the concept of the show. Yeah. So like, instead of uh, Felix, the one character was named Oscar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or wait. Was no, it yeah, it was Oscar and Grover for Oscar a while. Oscar and Grover <laughs> was our names. And that even changed. And then Bob. You're like, Bob come up with Fred. something. I don't know. I just watch Sesame Bob Street every day. So, <laughs> All right. Fred As or a Bob. High Fred or Bob. Because oh. like, uh, it just it kept changing because we didn't even know our characters' names for like the first <laughs> six episodes. And well, yeah, the, the real show was Felix and Oscar. Yeah. And so we were Grover. And Fred. Fred and Grover. And I was Grover. Or Bob. Anyway, <laughs> so fast forward to it's non linear editing and the same episode of The Strange Couple had evolved to we actually time kind of, travel, I think yes, it was. It we was did a time travel episode. We found a VHS I mean, tape that well, allows us to try time travel. Well, and once you've you know mastered the sitcom, yes. you got to go somewhere new. We'd right? go sci fi. Yeah. Not quite jump the shark yet, but just go farther. <laughs> so, in true Jeff and Joe fashion, we modeled that episode after an episode of The Simpsons in which Homer goes back in time and like, steps, on twig, episode. steps on That's a twig. Steps on a twig or something, and then he returns and like. There are no donuts in the world, but then when he leaves, you find out donuts are what it, it rains donuts or something. Oh, yeah. sure. So you go back in time, do one thing, and it affect you know, butterfly effect. Where it was a, yeah, yeah. It was so what was episode. your what was your object? What happened? We went in time, and I I, w- I went back in time, and I yeah. threw a, a aluminum can <laughs> away, you know, in prehistoric times. Oh, and then I go back. Yeah, and that's bad. Yeah, I never lived with him or something or. Yeah, it, it wasn't was, wasn't me. It was somebody else. Yeah, it's we got your brother. Ripple. We got your brother in the one of those yeah. one of those flashbacks I when was he was younger. Yeah. You said you, you, you went to, to prehistoric time. Yeah. Did you film out a window? Or did you have to like move it, the whole cons like? It was in the backyard because we moved beyond being. Oh, you weren't. We we, we oh, updated okay. the camera at and that point. Cut the cord. This yes. was on high eight or something. Yeah. Nice. And it was my parents' backyard uh, against the fence. Nice. And that was <laughs> the past. The forest yeah. or trees. You know, you know, when the dinosaurs and cavemen built red picket fences back yeah. in the day. I mean, they grow it's a fern. It's a kind of fern. Because yeah, this it's was pretty driver's license, so we yes. had to. We were not hooked to the VCR, just hooked to the general the, neighborhood. The neighborhood instead. In. And the park was like a mile, and that would take <laughs> yeah. forever. Yeah, we don't so, want to yeah. go that far. No, not for this it. one shot. Because yeah. we still kind of shot linearly, I think. Like or I think we still kind of shot it in order in some in, cases. In the style of the sitcom we had perfected. Yes, because this was this was what we did. Why right. would we change that? Right. You know, sorry. The award winning. <laughs> the award winning. Yeah. Oh my goodness. The award winning never to describe, be seen ever again. Wink, wink. wink describe wink. for us too, though, for those who don't know what it is, uh, the difference between linear uh, filming or editing and, and non-linear. Uh, well, linear is just shooting it in the order that it's uh, written mm-hmm. and and not uh, adjusting that at all. Um, Some movies not, still do that. Every once in a while, you'll find a movie that'll actually shoot that way. But yeah, generally, um, stuff doesn't shoot that way. Yeah. Well, and isn't uh, the Steam Box the reel to reel? Isn't that linear? Because you are at one point and you do that edit, you know, and then you go to the next point and you do the next edit. So there's there's really no going back. You know, you can go back and resplice, but uh, for the most part, you're just moving forward linearly. So you got to have a really good plan. Right. Yeah. And then nonlinear. Is uh, you're shooting things out of order and bringing them in and picking and choosing. Mm-hmm. Perhaps you're doing different takes at this point. Uh, mm-hmm. Sure. You have options. Yeah. Um, options. What are those? <laughs> we don't have that sort of stuff for this show. Now, what do you do professionally? <laughs> uh, right now, I'm an assistant editor and I work on a TV show called Mike and Molly. Nice. And um, you've been there for a few years now, haven't you? Um, or two seasons. I've been or? working there since February of 2014. Oh. Uh, but this is the second season. I was I way on. off with IMD. Okay, well that that might yeah, be why. that's why I worked. <clears throat> I've worked on two separate seasons so far. Oh, okay. Um, and it's been great. 
Yeah, so how, how'd you get in? Like, <laughs> how did you go question. from yeah. Janesville, Wisconsin right. to editing TV in, are, do you live in LA or? Yeah, Los, I live, work, live and work in Los Angeles. Okay. And um, I, after I graduated high school, I went to college and I knew I wanted to be an editor. Mm -hmm. So I enrolled in a television and radio program. And I basically took every editing class I could when it was available. And um, after I graduated college, I knew I wanted to work in some capacity, and I applied everywhere. And really, the only interview I got was in Los Angeles. And oh, really? Yeah. And I'd heard. Oh, that's great. Just um, I'd heard it was a love or hate it city, and you had to be there to know if you love it or hate it. Mm -hmm. And. I'd already packed, sort of put my belongings in my parents' house of like, <laughs> stays at mom's basement, goes into my car because I need it, yeah. and it's clothes or something. Mm -hmm. And if it fits in my little geo prism, I will take it along. <laughs> Otherwise, nice. it stays in mom's basement. And I, I packed it up and moved to Los Angeles and and uh, began working in there and then just made contacts and blah, blah, blah. I guess what that's was the first thing you worked yeah, on? Yeah, 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 what was it? Yeah. Uh, was so I, I had interviewed with a few places, um, and the first uh, the first job I had, I worked in basically the accounting department for all the television shows at Warner Brothers Studios, mm -hmm. uh, which was great. And I, it was like a nine to five, basically, job. Um, gave me enough money to get by out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a little more expensive than out here. And, <laughs> a little bit. Um, but it was great because I got to deliver paperwork around the Warner Brothers studios every day. Um, and I got to meet people that worked on every show that Warner Brothers was doing, basically every oh, show. Oh, wow. Yeah. They were just the accountants. They weren't like the producers of the show or anything like that. Yeah. Or, oh, okay. But I knew someone who knew someone that worked on the <laughs> sure. you know, I knew, I knew people that did work on the show, but they knew all the producers because they would contact with them. So they were able to, if I needed to, you know, pass my resume along to someone who might be interested in hiring me, please. Um, uh, so you, I worked there for a year. You literally became one of those people in Kevin Bacon's Six Degrees. Right. Just saying. Just throwing that out there. It's that whole, <laughs> I know a person who knows a person yeah. who knows Kevin Bacon. <laughs> hey, I, I'm, I'm two I, degrees. I do. I was I like know. three, I think, at one point. I guess, is it, is Not it, through you. one person in the middle, that's two degrees, right? So <clears throat> yeah. I'm, I'm two degrees now. <laughs> Which means so I'm three. Then I'm three. Then I'm three. So. <laughs> um, but I worked there for a year at the at the accounting department, mm -hmm. and um, then somebody hired me onto a, a pilot of a show, which is a pilot is mm -hmm. when you do the first one and the network then decides based on the finished product if they like it or not and if they want to put it on the air. Um, Which is a good rule of thumb because generally, like if people who watch like TV shows on Netflix or on the DVD box sets, and like the first episode, it's always called pilot, and you always watch that, and you're like, "This has nothing to do with airplanes." No. Yeah, why does this, <laughs> this not? Weird. Why does yeah. this not look like anything else the show ever became? <laughs> yeah. It's you know probably because of those cases where the, stu right. the studio was like, "Oh," or the, whoever was like, "Oh, well, we like this, but we need to tweak it." Yeah, and that's why like the locations are different. A lot, you know, sometimes right. or right. the look of even the actors have changed between the pilot. And they don't reshoot that pilot. They no, just put, it's, that's it's, the first right. episode. And something I'm curious about because I just read the other day that uh, directors who do pilots, they essentially get um, you know license or, or um, um, royalties. Right. You know, they might not shoot even the first episode of the show, but because they shot the pilot, they get royalties. Does that happen with the rest of the production, post production, and editing, and um, or? Do you get like five cents a, no. a week if your show? <laughs> I, I think gets only. Up. It's definitely just directors and probably the creator or producer. Okay. If they're not hired back, they will see money from if the series goes on. Mm -hmm. They even if they don't work on anything else. I don't know if it's anyone else, but it's definitely not the office production assistant who <laughs> happens to be copying and and oh, handing it's out not, scripts. Oh, it's not everybody at All night. Right. <laughs> That's Joe. I feel like you I know a person that would have been that. The whole thing would fall apart <laughs> without yes. that. Though. Yes. They'd wake up and they wouldn't have their scripts. So yes, they, yes. Yeah. Actually, the entire thing would have fallen apart that day. Yeah. <laughs> so then, from there, uh, from there, it was it was just more contacts and and networking and mm -hmm. job search and and um, found another job that lasted for three or four months and then moved on to something else that lasted for three or four months and then mm -hmm. found something that was supposed to last a year but only lasted three or four months, <laughs> Okay, et is cetera, it, et cetera. Is that three or four months thing, is that a common thing? Like just generally for like starting out? Um, yeah, well, s the first show that I worked on that lasted more than two weeks uh, was called Pushing Daisies. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about Pushing <laughs> Daisies. Julia hates that show, so we need to talk about it. No, oh. no. <laughs> 
Uh, I was the office production assistant, mm -hmm. and that's basically someone who works in the production office. And production is sort of in charge of booking crew and equipment. Okay. And just sort of making sure things stay on schedule. Um, you know, there's the they work really closely with the directors, uh, or, or the assistant directors, I should say, mm -hmm. who say, oh yeah, we're gonna do these pages, and, mm -hmm. and so we're gonna need this. The people. So make it happen. And then, you know, the uh, camera department, oh, we're gonna need a, a big dolly, or, or a, um, a jib, yeah. or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, you see how much I've forgotten already. These are all technical <laughs> terms. Don't <laughs> mind yourself with any yeah. of these. Uh, so, but and, and some, what you, was it, lighting? Yeah. 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 So again, and I was kind uh, of important. doing copying scripts and uh, other paperwork and handing out things okay. and distributing. Mm -hmm. There would be schedules, um, just, uh, just keeping everybody in the loop mm -hmm. and uh, sending emails also with the schedules attached and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, I kind of forget what I used to do over there. but <laughs> <laughs> That was the first time I it came out to see lot. you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's probably a lot of different responsibilities, you know, to make yeah. make everything work, and you know, diff each day it's probably different. Yeah, there was uh, did a lot yeah. of running. Yeah, there was lots I of guess. runs. I was answering phones, yeah, um, things of that nature, and just directing phone calls to various people or taking messages. Mm -hmm. um, sounds not that glamorous, and it wasn't super glamorous, but but you're again, you're a significant cog, as yeah, it were. Yeah. Like you know, I'm a cog. It's a small cog. Things but don't happen. A, yeah, you know. And there was there was uh, three of us there, and then we had our two supervisors as well. So there's five people uh, doing that, and we're working mm -hmm. in juncture with all the other departments on the show. I mean, there's 100 to 150 people that work on, on mm -hmm. a show like that, uh, from the writing staff to um, grips and people that mm -hmm. work the cameras and people that move the dollies that the cameras sit on. <laughs> right. Now, was this, like was this uh, right before the show got canceled? Or yeah, I worked in the uh, the last season of yeah. Pushing Daisies. We used so to joke. It was, it was Can genius. we resurrect was that? Yeah. That was my favorite. The year before that was the strike season, and it was supposed to be a full season. Oh, yeah. And yeah. It was 13. Yeah. And I don't really remember if we were ordered for a full season or a half season, but we um, we only did like nine or something. So there was only 22 episodes of its entire run. Okay. But I always remember that the, the wow. show won like seven Emmys. Right, mm -hmm. right. So it won like an Emmy for every three episodes on the air, which is a pretty good track. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so I think it won, it had won three or four the year before I was there. And then it won like two or three for the season I had been on. Now, when, uh, what uh, network or station um, and, and what night was it on? Because I, I watched it after the it fact. It was ABC. It was ABC. It was through Warner Brothers There's Television. Oh, man. It was Monday. I, I think it was a Tuesday. Or it was Tuesdays. Because I never, I never saw it There were only 22 episodes. Yeah. Wow. Of the whole season. Where was Netflix like back then? Yeah. Because <laughs> well, Netflix would have picked it up. Nowadays, I feel like Netflix would have. They would have grabbed it. Because that's very much so one of those kind of creative, visually visually entertaining yeah. shows. Well, a very unique show, too. Yeah. And, you know, kind of like Firefly. Like, who saw Firefly when it aired? Pretty much no one, and yep. it aired out of order. And then afterwards, people saw it and were like, "Oh, this is genius!" Yeah, yeah. but it was like, already ah, canceled a year and a half ago. Yeah. Or, you know, that was my experience with Pushing Daisies. Like, I, I think I did watch it on Netflix, but it was several years later. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, when was that? When was it canceled? Two thousand seven, uh, eight? In, no, uh, two thousand eight. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it was probably maybe a twenty eleven or twelve or something that I saw it. You know, just kind of came across it. Yeah. and you know, loved it and got to the end and was like, what. What I got to see them make Where'd three of those episodes. Uh, I am the whole so thing. jealous. You were there. That was a fun like, time yeah. out there. I don't know how much of that story. Was I can it tell. a fun like uh, group? Anything about that? Like, was it fun to make pushing daisies? Oh, it was a blast. Like, it was great. I mean, I, I left that show because it was canceled. And <laughs> you didn't want to stick around for a while. You're like, no, no, no. I'm like, leaving. I was like, <laughs> I don't care Let's that just you're keep canceled. Going. I'm leaving. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone on that show was a blast to be around. <clears> um, not, I don't want to make it sound like we didn't do any work, <laughs> but like it was just great to. I would I would go down to stuff <gasps> sometimes, and everyone was very nice and happy. Mm -hmm. um, everyone loved it because it was so, such a creative show, yeah. and and just everything was right. just great about it. That mm -hmm. everyone loved it, and I was like, this is what working in TV is like. Mm -hmm. Everyone is is the best person to be around. Mm -hmm. And not saying that isn't true, just like that was probably one of the. Was it like an exception? I, well, I was going to say that's a great so, and a, yeah, a terrible like, first impression. Right. right? Well, like the you know other shows that were done, people were not as happy. Yeah. Or th mm -hmm. they, they were so nice to be around. Like no one's really ever been unpleasant on a daily basis that I've worked okay. with. I could say that. 
uh, about most people I've worked with uh, in Los Angeles. You. But, <laughs> <laughs> but like, that was just, that's like, joking. that set the bar very high. Yeah, and right. It took me, like, yeah. a couple more shows of working to, like, realize – that exactly, maybe that exactly. it was special, yeah, it was which a is special. which is sad then to think that ABC canceled it because it really shouldn't have canceled yeah. it. Yeah. So I wonder, I, you know, I, I wonder what was the, uh, um, you know, who was the, the the target, you know, the demographic with that time slot and people and all that, that lived stuff, in 2011 was the target. Women, <laughs> apparently, yeah, yeah. Women like, my age, apparently, because uh, I knew a lot of people who watched it. Yeah. Yeah. It was a while show. it was on? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I watched it while it was oh, on. Man. I didn't, you know, I never heard of it. I remember yeah. seeing a trailer for it before they released it in the theaters. Like, it was like right when movie mm-hmm. theaters started putting commercials yeah. before the, the films. Ah, yeah. I remember there being an advertisement for it because it looked like an advertisement for a movie. A movie, right. Like, it looked right, like a Barry stuff, Sonnefeld yeah. movie that was right. coming out, not a, not a TV show. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was I enjoyed beautiful. It. I mean, it, to me, it was one of the most beautiful love stories ever written on television. The fact that they couldn't touch led to so many beautiful, intimate moments. Mm -hmm. Um, And my favorite was the when he built the car for her so they could put their hands in gloves and still, like, touch. It was so wonderful. (laughs) Lee Pace was amazing. (laughs) Yeah. The whole, like, yeah, the first episode where he brings her back and he's not supposed to and he wants to kill her and he can't because he's in love with Mm -hmm. her. Yeah, and then she's, yeah, it's so good. To watch it. With, yeah. So yeah, should, Pushing everyone Daisies. Everyone should watch it. Everyone yeah. should watch Let's Pushing. If you want to cry <laughs> every night, you watch Pushing Daisies, and you'll cry, and you'll feel so much better afterwards. Or if you're already crying every night, yeah. for whatever reason. Then doesn't matter. Buy a bottle of booze, cry, and then continue to watch Pushing Daisies. Cry about something Daisies. lovely and beautiful and I'm a poignant horrible and influence. whimsical. I should not be influencing anybody. Sorry. So then the show got canceled. <laughs> right. and, then, and then people cried. Then people cried. Yeah. And the good news is that uh, obviously it won a lot of Emmys, and mm-hmm. people hired uh, yeah. people based on their work on that and, yep. and the creator Brian Fuller went on to do Brian other things Fuller. and he's still yes. successful and um, I do I do know like the visual effects supervisor on that show um, his name's Bill and he did like all the Breaking Bad visual effects mm-hmm. and oh okay yeah cool. um, and those are also good yeah <laughs> uh, but the I'm, ones you don't realize are, are visual effects and stuff yeah, yeah. I've, yep. I've, he's posting a lot of stuff I, I'm his Facebook friend still and I've like, nice. See, that's I, an achievement. Yeah, like yeah. I didn't really know because I wasn't watching Breaking Bad, and then I, I was catching up to it late, like in the fourth or fifth season. And like, he, what's this show about drugs uh, yeah. you're working on? <laughs> but I would like sketchy. see his like pictures. I was like, what is that? That's crazy. He didn't like put any spoilers up. So uh. when spoilers happened, I uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you need to cover your mouth when you, if you just say that. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I think you're. I think you've lost the concept of the whole covering of your mouth. <laughs> yeah. uh. So then you went to <laughs> what happened next. Just oh, this is a long time ago. Um, <clears throat> I remember recently after that, I ended up working uh, my first job in reality television, Ooh, which was a whole different ballgame. On purpose? Yeah, they said, do you want to work? And I said, yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you want a job. Oh, it's like I just... Okay. Well, you might have a perception, and, yeah. you know, like I hate reality TV, and they're like, you want to do it? And you're like, oh, I guess so. Or you could be like, yes, I love it. Oh, I okay. You know. Yeah, I see where you're, you're going. also British. I, I <laughs> don't work in reality <laughs> anymore. Uh, but um, it, it's a, it's just a different ball game. Mm-hmm. And um, so, what was it like? Did like did you get a lot of notes about from the producers saying this is the way we need it to go? Because I imagine you just they film a lot of stuff. Yeah. What were you doing? And then the story has to get told. Um, I that job I was sort of an office PA slash set PA. So okay. uh, they had sh- scheduled shoot days and scheduled days off. Um, so I was really only there at this company for a week or two. Uh, but we would go in and... That's long in L.A. Right, right. <laughs> um, I just remember because it, it was my first reality job. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was in there and, I, you know, we were getting the equipment ready and recharging all the batteries and stuff. Not dissimilar to what I yeah. see happening around me here. <laughs> uh, yeah, hurry up. Is it charged? <laughs> <laughs> we have enough cards. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and it was, you know, we're scheduling out the next day uh-huh. uh, for, well, yeah, we're going to go out and shoot and we're going to load up the vans at... 6.30 and be on the road at 7 and start shooting at 8 or wherever it was. Mm-hmm. and um, Or possibly it was, we're going to shoot tomorrow and the scene involves a treadmill that has <laughs> been set up. So can you and you go set up the treadmill? It's because, like reality. What? Well, so real. I mean, would you watch a reality show where <laughs> no. a person got a treadmill delivered and then built the treadmill <laughs> and then it was like, I'm tired. I'm having a beer. Well, maybe you would. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It depends on who's. Doing I guess they it. call that like this old like house. Maybe they're, they're, if it was me. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's the whole building. HGTV motto. <laughs> Boy, you know? I am tired of building this treadmill. <laughs> They'll watch while we build shit. All right, Who's people. There? Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. 
So, uh, so I built a treadmill, which was cool. Uh, and then the next day, I, I, I went to set. We were filming the treadmill being delivered, uh -huh. but uh, I don't know exactly how, what exactly happened. But there was not an actor to deliver the treadmill, so I got to put on the <laughs> delivery, yes. delivery guy outfit nice. and nice. say, "Sign here." <laughs> Did you get the credit? Did you get? I the... don't know if there's a physical credit of oh. me in it. I don't really remember. Can we say what like, show it was? You got to get some IMDb cred. Yeah, I that. guess we could say what show. Is it is. okay? Because so, it's it's out there for people to watch. I gotta find it. I don't know where it is. <laughs> I, I gotta find I haven't the episode. Seen it since it aired, but uh, I had to say here, sign here, Mr. Simmons, for Gene Simmons <laughs> Family Jewels. <laughs> And there's three episodes. That's on your IMDb page. Can you show a picture? It was only. I was only. I'll try to one. find the. I'll try to yeah. find the video of because I found it. I found it because when the show was on Netflix, I found the episode that you were in because I showed everybody and I'm like, that's Joe. And actually, everybody <laughs> just went, that's Joe. And I'm like, I, that's what I was gonna say. You're like, wait, he's yeah. a delivery man. You're like, no. no. And that ruins your perceptive of reality yeah. television, doesn't it? It's like, yes, because really, Joe cannot lift that heavy box. It's like, yeah. Exactly. It took two of them. Well, there was another like, wait, guy. That's what ruined their that's perception? Ruined. It wasn't that Joe was delivering the box. It was like, yeah. I know he can't lift that box. That's a huge box. There was another guy I delivered it with. So um, So then after a week and a half, you had enough for two weeks. You're like, that's it. I can't handle Gene Simmons. I think it was near the end of their thing, and they had hired someone else. Or they they had they'd canceled production, and then... Oh, By okay. the time the season came back, or something like that, sure. or I sucked and they didn't want me back. I don't really remember. <laughs> now, does that happen? But I, Where did, they I did get a new job like a month later, so they I may, maybe oh, they called good. me and I was like, I'm working. Sorry. Nice. Yeah. That could have been it. There's yeah, a, yeah there's that's probably what it was. You seem like a nice guy. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> seem. Let's peel back those onion layers, Joe. Let's get to the dirt. <laughs> I hate onions. I can say that because I'm your friend. <laughs> there's no dirt. He's not a dick. <laughs> Oh, wow, that episode just got really awkward. Wow. Quiet. Wait, are, do onions are they dirty on the inside? Is they that are. What you're they're very dirty. Um, they smell like feet, which is actually true. I'm not. I was gonna try to ad lib something and make it sound stupid, but that actually came out as logical. I'm gonna stop talking. You guys keep going. <laughs> so, so what did you do after that? Uh, I worked on a couple pilots. Is this um, so? Like, what was the transition into editing? And what from uh, when you went out there to man. now? Like how how long? What's the time frame so far? Uh, this was a year and a half ish. I had moved out there in the summer of '07, worked for a year, and then pushing daisies lasted that fall. Yeah. And this was December or January of okay. I guess that's oh eight oh nine. Uh -huh. um, what was your ex expectation? Were you like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm not editing yet, or or were you ecstatic? Like, yeah, I keep I'm getting jobs. Yeah, I was pretty yeah. ecstatic. Like, yeah. I had heard it was tough to find work, mm -hmm. and um, I think at this point, uh, the most I'd gone out of, gone without work was a month to, oh wow, to, uh, to a month and a half ish. Wow. Um, and I was, nice. I was living in a place. I had moved at that point. That was good. <laughs> 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 I always said that when I moved out here. Or when I wrote my autobiography, <laughs> because no one will ever read that. The first chapter will be, when I moved to Los Angeles, I ended up finding a job very quickly and then found an apartment shortly thereafter. <laughs> Thankfully, it was only a mile away. But I did live with a 65-year-old woman who had four birds <laughs> in her two-bedroom apartment. <laughs> Does that not just sound like L.A. to you, though? Like, in my head, it's like, oh. I went on what, Craigslist. What, a 65-year-old woman with birds? With birds. That's what crazy, I picture when I think of L.A. Crazy people living in L.A. It, the, she had lived there for a while because she, she was older than me. And uh, so the rent was, like, controlled or whatever it was. Like, oh, it, They nice. couldn't raise it by so much. So, like, yeah. I, I paid five-something or whatever, what? which in Los Angeles – is is really cheap. That's sure. cheap for, a one for here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a one bedroom in a two bedroom. So ah. the two bedroom itself was a thousand to like eleven mm hundred. -hmm. Uh, this was in Burbank, California. It was like a mile from work. I was like, this is very Midwest nice. of me from Wisconsin. <laughs> now, how did you find mile. that? Was she like on the Craigslist, like looking for young male <laughs> strapping figure? No, I went. On, I did go on Craigslist. <laughs> also very LA. Uh, <laughs> I just typed in like the zip code or whatever, and the first place I was like, oh, this is a decent price because it was also like five or six hundred. Mm -hmm. And I like looked it up, and it was in the city called Northridge, which if you go on Google Maps and look at it, it's ten or fifteen miles away from Burbank. And I was like, 10 or 15 miles, like, that's, that's less than great. Janesville to mm -hmm. next, not even Madison. Yeah, but yeah. was that like an hour? <laughs> so <laughs> in the email, I was like, hey, like, I just moved here. Mm -hmm. I want, and this girl emailed me back. I, I even said, like, I have a job in Burbank. Like, I have income. I can afford to pay for an apartment. And she was like, oh, do you want to live here? Do you know how far away that is? So I was yeah. like, yeah, it's like 10 or 15 miles. And I asked my friend who I was living with. I was like, 
like, what's this girl's deal? Like, does she not want me to move in with her because I'm a guy or like I just moved out here? He's like, no, you don't want to drive from Northridge to Burbank. Like, that'll take you like two hours. Yeah. <laughs> Which I think in reality was more like it would take probably only 45 to an hour, but like you're sitting in, in traffic. Sure. Could be a lot. Um, so I was like, I emailed her back, like, no, I don't want to. I'll yeah. live at this place that's a mile away from where I work. Uh, but with I, this other lady yeah. and her birds. <laughs> And wrinkles. Well, I was not like that at all. But thank you for and putting gray that on. hair. So yeah, I was 22, and she was she was in her 60s, and I was like, it's a place for me to sleep yeah. at night, mm-hmm. and that's it. That's all. I <laughs> sure. had parking and and don't have to sleep to in sleep, my car, and I can afford it, and uh, that's where I live now. For and I lived there for a year. Uh, sorry, what was the original question? <laughs> <laughs> what, what was happened? your first editing? Oh, yeah. oh yes. Yeah. So between, I lived, only lived there for a year. I got a job. I was working on TV shows. I was mm-hmm. excited. I'd worked on two uh, sh- shows at the time. I, mo- I was moving apartments. I got, you know, I was not finding, I was not having trouble finding work. Mm-hmm. So I was not downtrodden. I wasn't like, I'm not editing feature films right now or anything yeah. like that. Uh, so I, w- I was very content with life and happy. and But... Uh, when I would meet uh, these potential bosses in interviews, they would say, what do you want to do? And a lot of people my age want to be writers. So when I say, I want to be an editor, because oh. I want to be an editor an editor since eighth grade, they're very excited to meet sort of a refreshing look on life or yeah, a sure. refreshing face. And um, Yeah, someone who's not a writer, not a director, not right. an actor. Yeah, mm-hmm. and not saying all wannabe writer, director, actors are pushy or anything like that, but like mm-hmm. a lot of them tend to well, I'm in the production office, but I want to be a writer, so I'm going to go see if I can hang out with writers all the time or mm. see if oh, I can nudge sure. my way in or put my script on the table and walk away or something like that. Yeah. You know, maybe <laughs> no, none of my friends Swear. have ever done anything like that. But I just, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's, sure. That, I think that's the that's production kind of the, yeah, office right. uh, coordinator's idea of what a go get writer is going to do in yeah. an office. And really, we're there to be professionals and work. Mm-hmm. So when I would meet with a lot of these potential bosses and they said they found out I wanted to be an editor and eventually they would hire me mm-hmm. they would remember that and if the show was winding down or if they just knew it was sort of a slow week or whatever um, hey well let me introduce you to people in post-production et cetera, et cetera. so I, w- nice. I was even on yeah. my first show that I worked on full-time Pushing Daisies I met uh, a couple of the editors and the assistant editors mm-hmm. and I talked about visual effects supervisor who's sort of part of the editorial team mm-hmm. post-production team so I was meeting all these people, and I was like, oh, this is exciting. I've met people who work <laughs> in what I want to do. Uh, Yay! Um, and then so eventually I worked on a, a – so I was, I was not downtrodden, and I worked on a project at the um, – I guess it was the fall of 2009, so about a couple of years after I'd moved out there. Mm-hmm. And the show got canceled, unfortunately, same network. Uh, not oh, the man. Well, it was, it was really the same person working in the production office. Yeah, that's right. Kiss of Death, if They're you will. Like, Told you. And um, <laughs> what what show was that? That was a show called Hank, which had Kelsey Grammer, who you might know as Frazier. Mm-hmm. Um, Don't remember Hank though. Don't remember it. I do. Oh, because I was his friend. It was five <laughs> episodes, I think, aired. Yeah, there wasn't so, much of that one. Uh, no, nothing to. We can gloss over that if you like. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. But the boss on that show. Uh, my boss there, her name was Rosie, and she knew a guy who who happened to be working on a pilot soon, and he needed a post-production assistant. And she knew I wanted to do post, and I had done good work for her. Mm-hmm. So she said, you know, I would recommend you to him. Do you want me to pass it on? I was like, yes, yes. move past by the resume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you not hear? We got canceled. Yeah, like, I need a job. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Stop talking to me. Just leave. <laughs> so... Um, so she in, uh, introduced me by email to him, and you know he brought me in and and met me and hired me for two or three weeks, whatever it was. For, yeah, uh, for the for, pilot for another pilot, mm-hmm. and uh, so that was my first job in post production. And I was very excited, and I was trying to learn as much as I can. Um, so I was I was working in post production. It was great. It was amazing, and and I still had no reason to be downtrodden or anything. <laughs> um, and that that show ended up getting picked up, but. Uh, by the time they actually said, we would like to pick the show up and create a series, you know, the boss had ended up going on another project yeah, and I had found another out. job. And Not that we were said, well, this show sucked, so we'd better go find new jobs. We're just sort of waiting for the next thing, and then the next thing came. And, right. and the, they had hired their own different crew onto mm-hmm. it. 
Uh, but I was ex- I had, was, had worked in post. I was excited, and um, um, that was my that was my first post production job. Um, and I continued on, and actually, that boss on that show is my boss today. So that's <laughs> sort of right, interesting. Yeah. yeah. So he had remembered me, and when they were looking to hire, he had worked with me, and a couple other people on the show had worked with me, and they remembered me, and called me up, and want to work. We, and you, know, of course, said no. Yeah, what's, yeah, how, how <laughs> excited were you when, you when you got that call? Because it's, you know, you're continuing to work yourself up, work your way up. And two years or, you know, two and a half years or however long that was, that's still amazing before you, you know, even get close to what you want to do. Yeah. Um, so when, you know, when you got that call, the guy that you knew, like, hey, we want you to do some assistant because you're, you're an assistant editor. Right, right. right. Yeah. What, what was that like? Uh, it was great. I was I was excited to. You're just like, you're like, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, play it off. Hang up the phone and then just (laughs) run around the block for six blocks screaming. Six blocks naked. (laughs) Screaming. In L.A., so that's pretty normal. Again, nothing out of the ordinary. Not weird at all. (laughs) Weird people. (laughs) So can you talk a little bit about the process? So like, so you're moving now into an assist as an assistant editor, not lead editor. So what would that be on? Like, what's the difference between what you do on Mike and Molly versus what the lead editor would do? Basically what I do, or what my responsibilities are, um, bringing things from the stage or the set into uh, the editing uh, room, the editing bay, and preparing it for the editor. Uh, And then anything that he says, this can go out somewhere else to whoever or so-and-so or what, uh, the network or studio or whatever, that's my job as well. So there's everything getting to him, ready for him to cut and then when he's finished putting it away and then there's other things in between i need some help with the sound work on this you know like can you find me a sound effect of a dog barking in the distance or you know like tires peeling out or mm-hmm. see what you can do make this because we're gonna have to do visual effects on this shot you see what you can make it do you know i don't have time all to work on these visual effects so can you do that in your as he likes to say, copious free time. Yes. <laughs> Which is sort of a joke because it's not tons of free time. Uh, do asking you to do a visual effect? Uh, yeah. So I mean, that's not super common. I mean, there's there's a handful of episodes mm-hmm. we worked on where there's just an effect, or you know, on stage they'll say they'll fix it in post. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of times they're planned, and yeah, they say, they call up uh, uh, us and say, you know. Can we do a visual effect on this? And <laughs> we're like, yes, you can. Uh, nope. For instance, You're like, had, how many do we have this week? Uh, okay. Yeah. Yes, one more. We've we had an episode. <laughs> I think it's already aired, so I can talk about it. Um, <laughs> uh, Molly, the lead, is um, happens to have a hemorrhoid pillow, uh, the basically a big donut-shaped thing, and she she throws it, and it happens to go onto her stepdad's uh, hand. And sort of like, a, oh, my gosh, we, we could never do that again if we tried. <laughs> and smash cut to her, like, looking in a mirror, throwing it behind her while he's spinning around on a rolly chair with a plunger on his head. <laughs> like, <laughs> they just went the entire way. And um, so they got the one where she just threw it onto his hand. Yeah. And he went, oh. <laughs> but the, one, the other way was they had we had to do visual effects on that. So uh, he's like well, we have all these shots of her going like this behind her back, and we have all these shots of the pillow going onto his plunger, which is attached to his oh, head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See what you can do. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I basically did a very rough thing, but it looked halfway decent, I'm not going to lie, or <laughs> pat myself on the back too much. And then it went to our uh, post-production facility, and they, and they made it look a lot more clean and smooth than I did because mine was mm. – it wasn't rough, but it, it wasn't. Uh, Poly- air, polished all the way. It wasn't arable. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure. Um, so that's just something. Or, uh, hey, they're in a car and they go over a speed bump or something like that. Can you find a sound effect of a car driving and speeding up and boom, boom, going over the speed bump? So things like that. Make, or can you give me options of the speed bump? Or can you give me options of mm-hmm. the engine? Something like that. Or I'll pick them. Mm-hmm. Or have them ready for me in 10 minutes when I'm going to walk in your door or go, Okay, closing my eyes, listening. That sounds right. Mm-hmm. Do that. 
Is there is there a lot of uh, intense deadlines with that? Because and maybe that was uh, something else. But I'm going to be in in ten minutes. Um, find these effects for me, or find this this audio for me. Does that happen a lot, or is it a little more laid back, or what? I guess I put words in his mouth by saying ten minutes. But he, uh, yeah. I mean, this is just the actual. But but he'll be like, I- I'm going to come in shortly. Yeah. Give me some uh, options. But the thing I've found out is, like, if he says, yeah, I'll be in an hour, and I know it'll take me half an hour to do, I'm not going to wait half an hour to do it. I'll just start it yeah. right away. Anyway. And then half an hour, I'll say, is that ready yet? And I'll say, sure is. <laughs> Sounds no. like a good worth work ethic yeah. there. Now, Ryan, sure. I don't want you to get any ideas. Being like, <laughs> Jeff, that video that you started a month and a half ago, can you have it ready in two minutes? Because I want to come in and look at it. I'll just be like, no. <laughs> nope. I nope. Just, I, I'm just very ambiguous. I'm like, Jeff, we need this in the future. <laughs> I'll be in to look and at it. Guess when that <laughs> just might be. Walk away. Yeah. Uh, when there, is that? Which there, meant yesterday. Actually. Yes. Ironically, yes. Yeah. we go back in time. There are a little sometimes intense deadlines because um, we shoot our show in front of an audience, uh, so we actually shoot it fairly linear. Actually, mm-hmm. <laughs> or we shoot from the beginning to the end. So an audience sitting there for three hours will have an understanding of where the characters are going in this episode. Uh, but we do sometimes or pretty much every episode shoots something the day before. Mm-hmm. For instance, if there's a stunt or a hemorrhoid ring toss behind the back onto a plunger. Mm. Um, These are all just generic examples, <laughs> mind you. These aren't specific. Exterior sets. Uh, I'm imagining you don't, if you do have some exterior. Since I've been there, we've not gone outside, but we'll, okay. shoot, we'll shoot scenes that take place outside. Um, just on our sound stage, we'll shoot oh, okay. Uh, just I, We haven't had anything that necessitated, I think, going outside. Okay. So, for instance, the the ring to- the hypothetical ring toss that actually happened, uh, yeah, I, that was shot on like a Tuesday, mm-hmm. and then Wednesday at six thirty, our audience came in, and that was that wasn't the first scene, but I had to have it ready. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I basically, I think I loaded the footage that Tuesday night, and he was cutting it on a Wednesday. I don't remember exactly what day I I did. Th- I knew I'd have to do it at some point. <laughs> I don't remember if I did it on Tuesday or Wednesday, but it had to be done within basically twenty four hours. Oh, sure. Which. You know, it's one shot. It wasn't that complicated. I think it took me, there wasn't all the things that were going perfect. Maybe it took me an hour of, of work that I was doing, mm-hmm. but there was other things obviously happening at the same time. I was going back and forth. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there, there are often time crunches. And another example, we shot an episode um, for Christmas this season. That I think it shot about 10 days before we actually aired it. So we had to put it into fast forward mode mm-hmm. on uh, get it done on our to-do list and um, we uh, took care of it and got it locked and sent it off and it mm-hmm. aired on time and I watched it with my family <laughs> <laughs> really so weird <laughs> did, do you get a do you get to watch a lot of because you said you you bring the footage as they're shooting it are you waiting and then you know all right here's a whatever hard drive canister if it's film whatever take it is that what's happening like yeah, um, I could go down to stage, you know, if I if I had nothing to do really. And but my job doesn't take place on the stage, so it's pointless really for me to be there. Be mm-hmm. in people's way. I obviously would stay out of their way, but it's, it's literally pointless for me to go there. Should be standing okay. on oh, the so sound you're not, stage. You're not there, like, come on, come on, give me, come on, come on, yeah, come yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> you can do better, Melissa. Hey, come on. Hey, yeah. hey, are, you, are you are you done with that tape yet? Because I really need that tape right now. You walk up to the director. You're like. You know, I don't think that. I don't think that really worked. <laughs> that didn't work for me. They're like, I'm not going to be able to edit. Excuse that. me, sir. Move who over. Are you? <laughs> Give me yes. the bullhorn. Yeah. Um, I'll yell cut. Yes. yes. Uh, I need We do, but we do have a feed that goes from our cameras to our offices. So. Oh, I suppose you have technology, right. so sure. I can see what's happening. And uh, and then are you? Uh, how how do they film? Are they filming on film, or are you you recording back in your? Uh, and your office, they're, or? they're shooting uh, tapeless now. We just moved this season. We're shooting on media cards. Uh, we have S by S card, and then we have like a backup system as well. Mm-hmm. And plug them into the computer, and I'm transcoding them. We use Avid. Okay. And we're I'm bringing them in, and I'm syncing them and grouping them. And where for Avid? Are you going to DNX HD? Are you doing ProRes or? Yeah, we're we're doing DNX HD and uh, the lo- lowest one, 36. We have a, a shared file storage, a Unity that okay. I have on my computer, and he can get it in his office as well. We can be working on the same projects at once. And that's for a proxy edit? You're just editing with a proxy? Yeah, yeah. It's not broadcast mm-hmm. uh, quality or anything like that, um, but it's good enough for sending out a cut, whether digitally or mm-hmm. on a DVD or something like that. 
Do you now who who handles the onlining and finishing? Is that would that be you or? Uh, I prep all the material that goes to our our video house is Technicolor. Uh -huh. Is, is Technicolor, <laughs> and it doesn't work when you say the name and yeah. then cover up your voice. <laughs> Says you you got to say something else. Is random company. <laughs> it's uh, oh, it's in the credits anyway. Uh, they and it's they true. do all the color correction, or I guess first they do the uh, tape. They bring all the footage in, on, and it's all high res and yeah. So online, do the yeah, online. They, they, yeah. So, yeah, they do the online. Yes, yeah, <laughs> I do that. So they they'll do they'll do the color online and color and. and we're bringing in VFX from a couple of different companies, and okay. um, and then we also send it. We mix our audio at, at Warner Brothers, and they'll they'll mix it all and sweeten it and make sure everything's golden. And then um, this is not really anything I do, but I do know since I've worked in post production in other capacities that you know our our people are there and they're listening to all the audio, making sure it uh, is good, and they're you know watching. Uh, all the video frames they're sort of supervising when the color correction guy is going through mm -hmm. or at least coming in and watching the final pass and they're at the mix our producers are at the mix and then they'll lay back the audio on they have so many tracks it's like <laughs> 16 or something oh okay you know there's like 5.1 and then they were doing music and sound effects on different ones and uh -huh. lt and rt left total right total um making sure it's all golden and they're making their dubs and shipping it off to the network after it's all been quality checked, QC'd. Mm -hmm. So, and is this, is this happening every week pretty much? Is it a um, 22 episode, 24 episode Yeah, we have 22 season? and it's not every week. We don't, we don't shoot every week. Sometimes there's a, a week off a hiatus week. Okay. And um, so, and we didn't simply have air dates for a long time. So we weren't locking these episodes. Oh yeah. Um, but you know we don't lock them the day before the air. It's it's at least a week before. Mm -hmm. Don't pull a South Park where it has to be done and ready to go in like yeah. two hours before it's aired. Watch out for the power outage. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sucks. And um, then do you pick up work when they go on break, or is that time for you just you're like taking off of work and enjoying yourself? Uh, it's it's sort of. Uh, it's not close enough. Okay. Um, sometimes you uh, want to work more sometimes because you've worked so much a lot mm -hmm. of people they'll work 12 16 hour days for five days a week late fridays early mondays and they you know if the show goes on hiatus for three months they want to like, use it I'm to off. rest yeah mm -hmm. and you know they'll look at their own finances um this last summer i happened to work on a, a different show okay. um in between because the timing was right it was a shorter season and i was able to to finish out my work there and still come back and it was so that was nice to continue to work and mm -hmm. and make television <laughs> yeah um, do you do you get to do any creative work out there where you do get to edit um, you know obviously when you're doing a lot of that professionally like you said you might just want to be away from it and do something else but do you you know do you do any f short films or anything like that yeah I've had um, just because you work with people and you talk and or you work in editorial and they know that you want to um, be an editor they'll come to you and say I have a project I filmed and I have no money do you want to edit mm -hmm. and I'll say oh, I'll give you the script or something like that or how long is this short or something like that and I'll sort of you know if I'm not working it's not that hard to say yes mm -hmm. and if I am working it's not that hard to say no so um, uh, I've worked on a few things and and nothing longer than like four or five minutes uh, well there was one thing that was a little bit longer like nine minutes but it was sort of a short pilot uh, no like short films or anything like that mm -hmm. um, on the side but I've yeah, a lot of this independent stuff and people do it with friends. I've, I've helped in, then I've had to help out on, on set as well, or I've wanted to help out on mm -hmm. set. Um, a couple of my friends wrote uh, sort of a sketch show, like an SNL light sort of thing, mm -hmm. and they, you know, they said, "Hey, we're filming it these two days on the weekend. Uh, do you want to help?" And then I had already been asked to edit it as well, um, <laughs> so I edited that and put that together and. Did all the graphics and music and everything oh, that we nice. put it in. Yeah. Now, um, do you do you want to do TV? That was my question. Uh, yeah, yes. film or YouTube? You know, it's kind of a you know a little bit little bit different. A lot of the same, a little bit different type of thing. Like, do you have aspirations for any of those, or are you just you ready for anything? Yeah, really ready for anything is is sort of 
where I'm at. Sorry. I got like a <laughs> It's the air. Start the it's the uh, sea level. Um, yeah, really ready for anything is sort of where I'm at. Like, I'm very happy where I am now, and I've happened to work in television a lot just because I've met a lot of the people working in television. Mm -hmm. But um, and not that I'm, like, bored with it or anything, and oh, I want to do feature films or, mm -hmm. or I want to write and direct my own stuff right, or anything like that. Right. Um, but I'm not really going to turn down anything if the opportunity is is right. Um, I will say when I was before I moved to LA, I had worked um, when I was in school. Uh, we edited some commercials because we would just get uh, footage for, that was professionally shot that my professor was able to borrow from a friend of his that worked in commercials or anything like oh, that. Oh, sure, sure. And I, I liked short form a lot because you were there's a little less rules. Like you don't have to. To get someone from the kitchen to the car pulling out of the, the <laughs> garage, you don't have to show every step. When uh -huh. sort of in television or in a feature, you'd have to sort of show those if it was uh, if there was things happening. But mm -hmm. you could just like go into the store, and then all of a sudden they're driving down the road or something like right, that. In commercials right. and short form, it's 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 like that. And um, I mean, I th and also you know a lot of the things I've I've edited for friends or with friends, we put them on like YouTube or, or like Funny or Die or something like that, mm -hmm. just trying to get notoriety or, or views there. Um. <laughs> it's a great <laughs> story. I was here the entire time. Uh, before we wrap up here, do you do you do a movie voice by chance? <laughs> oh, no. Can you do a movie voice? Because we've invented a game. We haven't perfected oh. it, so it could no. go horribly awry. It's going to go terrible, but it was awesome. I but it's fun. I, I could I could try. Uh, okay, Jeff and I are right. former high school announcement. <laughs> that's true. Oh, we buddies. <laughs> that's all the cred you need for this game. It's, it's very awesome. little the bar for entry. <laughs> yeah, we're not. Okay. We're we don't. Yeah. So, so uh, this is the uh, movie voice off. Okay, uh, as we call it. <laughs> Love this and part. And it's kind of a round robin. And what you want to do is you just you say a phrase to forward the story. Okay. And you're kind of trying to throw the next person off. You wanna you want them to lose. <laughs> uh, last time we did it, we didn't make it very far. Yeah just because it's pretty funny and you don't know what to do. This all um, came out of just you and I messing around. Movie, movie trailer We actually voice, did this. Right? Yeah, 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 movie trailer yeah. voice. Movie trailer voice guy voice. He does it a lot voice. better than I do, but I can make stuff that just... <laughs> Are we uh, clockwise, counterclockwise? Um, we'll do, uh, what is this, counter? counter -clockwise. Yes. <laughs> Let's do counter. Yeah. Okay. Gotta get a clock out. So I'm trying to throw him um, off. Hang on, where's my watch? <laughs> yeah. Um, and... Uh, you could start, probably. Okay, I can start. Um, You're always good at but that. yeah, you just wanna you wanna do maybe a phrase. Try not to make it two phrases or two different ideas. Try to you know one kind of leading to to the next thing. Perfect. Um, so I, I guess I'll kind of go ahead. This and is how we off. end the show. <laughs> one day in a land far away, there was a spiky hedgehog running away. He didn't know whether to go or to leave. But he brought his friend, the can opener. Now this wasn't an ordinary can opener. No, it had secret powers. Like unopening cans. And the power to destroy human nature. But let's focus on closing cans again. His name was Porcupine. Wait, was that the name of the hedgehog <laughs> or the can, or the can opener? opener? Okay. <laughs> who were apparently I don't know. I think who were apparently one and the same. <laughs> Twist ending. See, now we don't know how to score it because <laughs> that didn't make sense. But you broke, so <laughs> everyone wins. I love that one. That's a tie. That one was a tie for the episode. Uh, I feel like the, the guest on each episode is always the one who will lose this. Yeah, because <laughs> we've at least been doing it for a couple weeks. Oh. <laughs> that was fun, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks I for playing. Enjoyed that. Um, so, so much fun. Are you on? Are you on the internet? Uh, do you Twitter? Do you have Facebook where you want people to check you out or look you up? Uh, if you follow me on on Twitter or Instagram, you will be very disappointed. But uh, <laughs> it's I, mean, I, I love disappointment. I had to take a picture of you for Instagram. Like I tagged you in a photo on my account just. So <laughs> so that you, you were doing something. Uh, it's <laughs> you could follow me on Joseph Olton, which is my full name without the F because the PH at the end of Joseph makes the F sound. But I could plug <laughs> the uh, Twitter awesome. account that I've created uh, because it's football related, and we've talked about football in the show. Oh yeah, Here you go. Uh, my friends and I were watching football and went, "How do these guys stay on the air? They say the stupidest stuff." So we've created <laughs> uh, it's NFL announcer. It's at NFL. 
announcer, uh-huh. and it's basically things people say are stupid, like uh, um, there was a guy who said, welcome to the, the game between the Green Bay pa- Packers and the Carolina Hurricanes, which the Hurricanes <laughs> is the hockey team in Carolina, not the football <laughs> team. It's literally the first thing he said on the broadcast. <laughs> the Hurricanes are not a foosball player. They right? don't know how to get that, that would be ball the Panthers. into the court. And I was like, the you Panthers. rehearsed yeah, this all <laughs> morning and then you just, <laughs> just first thing up. and i was like probably I'm has a just gonna watch there, the yeah. packer game <laughs> this all right Basically, well anytime i watch sports. joseph ulted thank you so much for joining us this week Yay, Joe. and so uh, look much. forward to having you back again sir yes thank you for having me i look forward to coming back uh, at some point in the future. so had a la for us you got it cheers Bye. yeah yes. hold on yeah, you have to make a noise that like whoop 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 whoop. I, sorry, this has been bugging me for like the last 25 minutes. Oh, I mean, I'm... There you go. Okay. okay. You, you want to lower this down? Sorry. There you go. I'll put that. Is that better? Oh, is that the broken one? Oh. oh, no. That chair is broken? Oh, I won't. that's my chair. That's okay. Sit yeah, perfectly give it to still. Julia, we'll swap for the next it out. Even if it broke, hours. you'd be able to get out of it. I would. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. He's in the hot seat Just need now. a little drink before I become incapacitated and, and uh, <laughs> paralyzed from the neck down. Um, Enjoy it while you can.